Hello again, everybody. My name is John D. Healy. I do a podcast. It's called It's Good to Talk. People know me because I published this book a year ago, and that's how it all started. Real life stories from Stoney McGurn, a friend of mine, 4941, stories about the present day. Podcast is sponsored by LiffyMovers.com. And my guest today, I'll introduce him in a moment. He moved into a new apartment yesterday. And as the slogan goes, that Liffy do the lifting. And I believe he was very happy. My guest today is Christian Parker. He is the executive director of an organization called gayandsober.org. So, Christian, please tell us a bit about yourself. Where were you born and how did you get into this organization? When was it founded? And tell us a little bit more about it. I want to be educated and informed because I don't know anything about the organization. Certainly. Thank Thank you for having me, John. Welcome. Uh, I was born in, in uh, San Antonio, Texas in 1977. I am 44 years old. And uh, in the early 80s, my parents decided to move to New York City. And we've been here ever since. Good. And uh, it's uh, we lived on the Upper East Side and the Upper West Side. And I wound up uh, going to school here and working here. And, and over uh, a period of time, I uh, I wound up getting involved with, um, I, I, you know, I never really thought that uh, drinking was a problem for me. Um, although my father was a bit of a drinker. And uh, it was in my late teens, very early 20s when I realized uh, that I drank excessively. And I was also, you know, doing a lot of drugs at the time, but it was the 90s. It was yep. kind of fun and the thing to do. And things just started kind of crumbling around me, you know, the job, and the relationship. And what wound up happening is uh, I just, you know, I, th- I was seeking professional help and my therapist you, at the I, time. I, often, I've met other people like in that situation. Usually, I shouldn't say, but bar tenders, bar owners, and they're very, very good and very open. And I asked one guy, like, when did you know that you actually hit rock bottom and that you needed help? Uh, it must have been in December of 2000, and I had literally thrown away a relationship. I was fired from a job within one week of that, and... I didn't have any money coming in and, you know, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling well up here. I wasn't feeling, feeling well here. And I didn't that, That's know. my next question. Like something like yeah. that for someone, this happened to a friend of mine one time as well. And she got so depressed that she, <clears throat> she ended up suicidal. And I had to help her through that and say, you know, please, please wait and try and see what's going to happen next. And, you know, it, it, things worked out for her. But, to lose the job, lose the relationship, you're in a very at a very low, low point. Like you were lucky, I would assume, that you were able to find help and help yourself as well. Is that true? Well, well, you know, ever since I was I around thirteen, I always felt a little, a little blue, like a little. I, I didn't. We didn't call it depression, but I was always very just kind down. of down, mm-hmm. and. Uh, High school was really tough. I, I was, you know, a, a gay kid in all boys Catholic school, so um, I felt different. I felt picked on, but when I discovered drinking, I, I, I it was, I felt normal, and I, I could, I could interact, I could socially engage. However, I didn't realize this until later. Um, alcohol chemically is a depressant. So if my doctor was prescribing me antidepressants and I was drinking alcohol, it wasn't working. Uh, it was canceling the effect. Okay. And so by the time I was 23, I was, I was having suicidal ideation. Oh, wow. Very, very lethargic, really depressed. I couldn't even get out of bed. Oh, wow. And, and I was, it was, it was really because of the alcohol, just so much, um, okay. that I was pouring into my system and the uh you know it, i i didn't think to get help uh i was told to get help by my therapist because my therapist was like well you don't have a job anymore you don't have a boyfriend anymore um do you want to try going to a rehab mm-hmm. 
And I thought, I thought, oh, that's, I mean, it's not that bad. But I, I had nothing else to do, so mm -hmm. I went. And it was there that I learned, wow, I mean, I, I, I must have this thing. <clears throat> right. My guest today is uh, Christian Parker. He's the executive director of an organization called Gay and Sober. And he's explaining the background to how this organization was set up. Continue, Christian, please. Then how did Gay and Sober, was it, obviously, it, it evolved from your own life experiences? Mm -hmm. So, you know, being a, young, being a young man in New York City, uh, I still love to have a great time. <clears throat> I like to go out dancing and meet friends and do this and do that. And uh, I, I love celebrating, you know, my community, myself. Pride Weekend is always fun. But Pride Weekend in New York, it's very charged with lots of drinking, lots of indulgences, lots of drugs. And I was hanging out with some friends that were also sober. And we noticed there was nothing really fun and or safe for people like us to do and participate in. And so we had the idea to throw a party one evening on the, if this must, what year was this? This was 2010. And we threw a party. Uh, we Facebook was new at the time. And so we invited everyone we knew. We only thought maybe 50 people would show up. 400 people came. Oh, wow, that's really exciting, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was great. And so that was the first time, first time we threw an event. And right. There was there was a DJ. There was lights. It was really we, we spent a lot of money on it. Okay, but no, um, okay. yeah, and we lost a lot of money because you know we didn't charge at the door. Okay. And and um, but we're like. We're like we're onto something. People Definitely. want to do something. Yeah, yeah. And so well, that, was um, the start and of, that was the start of the organization, mm -hmm. I guess, or the the idea was created as a result of exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And so um, the next weekend, my friends got together. We got organized, and we uh, we launched the website, and we we've grown ever since. You know, our, I, know I remember. Our, yeah, last year you had a big event in the Western Hotel and LiffyMovement.com again. You hired Liffy to uh, move everything into the hotel and move it out a few days later. That was a big, big convention. I mean, I saw people there from all over the world when I was setting up your platforms. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that was that was a smaller convention because of the pandemic. Right. But in 2019, we had mm -hmm. uh, an event, and it had participants from 15 countries. Um, over a thousand people. Okay, and so the organization is pretty much global, is it? It is. It okay. is. We have volunteers. We have volunteers all over the world. Okay, and now let's get to the, I guess, the nuts and bolts. Pardon the pun. Like people that want to join or go to meetings. I guess it's, it's all basically it's a similar concept to AA. Is that right? For people that want to go to meetings. Yes and no. Okay, tell me the difference. Um. So. Gay and Sober is a, a lifestyle company for people that choose to not drink or do drugs, yet okay. still want to have a good time. Okay. 75% of our members identify and admit that they do go to AA meetings or okay. NA meetings. Okay. But there is that 25% there is that 25 that don't go to meetings. They just, okay. they just don't drink or do drugs, and they're welcome. Totally. So um, at the conference, we offer something for everybody. We offer large AA style speaker meetings at night. We offer other programming for the other folks. And then as far as the parties are concerned, the dance parties and the outings, everyone comes together. Right. And I, I saw like lots of promotional products there. You're in good company because I interviewed Tom Sanchez on this podcast from the United Friend Group and he did my banner and he does pens and well, I saw lots of promotional products there, which, you know, that's, that's branding. I mean, like, my background is marketing, so I'm kind of in love with branding. It's important for you, even doing this podcast, to get your message out to people that don't know you yet or don't know what Game Sober is about. I didn't know, but now I'm learning because you're educating me and informing me of what it's about. So when people, say, want to get involved, is there, do they fill out a form? Is there a subscription? Is there a donation? How does that part work? Sure. So jo joining Gay and Sober is completely free. Every 
everyone is welcome. They can go to gayandsober.org for more information on our mission statement. If they want to make a donation, we would love that. It's all tax deductible. They can also do that through our website. And gayandsober.org has expanded not only to (coughs) in-person events, but night nightly virtual events during okay. the pandemic and okay. and continuing on still and we own uh, five social media platforms and people can check us out on instagram at gay and sober they can check out our private facebook community um it's it's really nice to see how it's all grown okay and um the convention you had in the western hotel last summer Will that be on again this year? I know I'm working for Liffy here, just asking if that comes. Oh, yes. Okay, that's good to hear. Absolutely, and we will definitely use Liffy and United Print. Okay, let Liffy do the lifting. So let me see what other questions my listeners might have. I think you covered a lot there. So it's free to join. Everybody is welcome. Uh, Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, whatever. LGBTQ, all of those members. And what about if somebody is not lesbian or gay, but maybe they're shy individual that doesn't want to go to AA or something else? I guess it doesn't matter to you if they want to join, they want to join. But right, if they want to join, they want to join. And you know, sometimes we have allies, uh, friends of the community. Right. I don't I necessarily identify as LGBTQ, but okay, they they. I don't know, they, they just want to be a part of it. So we always invite right. them to our big dance cruise uh, on Pride Sunday in New York. It's, uh, we, partner, we partnered with the Circle Line, okay. which is a, sight, a sightseeing company, and we, rent their, yep, and we rent their largest vessel. It's 650 people all together dancing, having a good that time. Sounds, it's great. That sounds like fun. Because like, as my listeners know about me, like I was born in Ireland and raised up. And uh, you reach a certain age, you do confirmation, which means you take the pledge. And I remember they gave us a little pen to wear in your lapel. It was called a, called a pioneer pen. And when people saw it, it meant that you didn't take part in alcohol. Now, I'm sure my pioneer pen is well rusted by now, wherever it is. I'm sure I lost it a long time ago. But uh, that's the. So I would imagine like people wearing the, that pioneer pen would be glad to join Gay and Sober for the activities. Like, like I know dancing is a big a big thing and it's a healthy thing to do and creative and all that and good to meet people and socialize. And the name of the podcast here is Good to Talk. And like during the pandemic, I reached out to a lot of people that I thought might be lonely on their own and all that just to talk to them and have conversation. And that's why my podcast is called It's Good to Talk. My guest today, Christian Parker, the executive director of GayAndSober.com. If you have any questions for Christian, you can send them to my email and I will get any answers we didn't cover. JH for news at Yahoo.com. If you like this podcast, you can hit the like button. You can subscribe. Uh, Christian, have you anything to add to the podcast before we? I just want to thank you. I really just want to thank you for uh, inviting me to this. I like to share information with people. I think, as I said earlier, to be educated and well informed is a good way to help other people. You don't have to be everything to everybody, but have some knowledge. I always finish on a quotation sometimes. And my quotation today is, don't count the days, make the days count. Okay? So thank you again, Christian, and I'll say goodbye. Bye-bye.